Now joined by Jake Williams. And, uh, Coach, it's been a whirlwind for you. Uh, but how does it feel to be the head men's basketball coach at Dodge City Community College? It feels great. Very thankful uh, for the opportunity that I was given from from Mr. Ripple and, 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 and Mr. Nolte. And it's just an amazing place with, you know, phenomenal you know, resources and support and then facilities. And obviously, you know, the Jayhawk is elite. So just, you know, extremely excited about, you know, the new opportunities and new challenges ahead. And I've uh, been working extremely hard and, and can't wait to get out there. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, starting with where you grew up, your, your basketball career, uh, which got you into coaching and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, I'm from a small town outside of Nashville, Tennessee. It's called Ashland City, Tennessee. It's actually the same little town that, that Pat Summit um, grew up in, with the same high school and all that. And I grew up playing playing basketball and baseball and football and tennis. I kind of played all sports and um, but you know, my heart was definitely in basketball. I knew from a young age, uh, I wanted to coach. I didn't know exactly how my, uh, route was going to be. Um, and then obviously, you know, there's different stories for everyone. I tore my knee as a, as a freshman and senior in high school, uh, tore my meniscus and continued to, to, to play my senior year with it. And, uh, didn't play small ball college. I decided to, to go join, um, Middle Tennessee State with Kermit Davis as a, as a student manager and ended up getting elevated to the video coordinator. And, um, that's kind of how I got my foot in the door, um, for coaching. And then, you know, went on to NC central as the director of operations and, and then down to Northwest Florida state as a junior college assistant and then spent the past three years here at USC Sox. That's kind of been my, been my route into the coaching world, but it's been it's been something I've known I've wanted to do since a very young age. Had a passion for it, and um, you know knew I wanted to do something I loved the rest of my life. And you come to come to Dodge after a very successful tenure there in South Carolina, including a twenty seven to four record uh, in the number seven seed in the national tournament. But unfortunately, uh, due to coronavirus, that tournament got canceled. But let just talk about the program and the winning culture that you installed there in Allendale, South Carolina. Yeah, so it was it was a situation where we knew it was you know coming from Northwest Florida State to to USC Tuskegee it was it, it was very different in terms of you know what you're able to kind of offer um, in terms of resources and support. You didn't have scholarships or you know a cafeteria or anything of that matter, so we knew it was going to be challenging. But what we knew we had to do was you know, get in there early and we had to identify and evaluate kids early and get a head start. A lot of junior college coaches kind of wait until the spring and try and figure out who may or may not qualify. So they're a little late um, in terms of starting recruiting. So what we did is we did a really good job of getting in on kids, you know, the previous summer or even in the fall and really building that relationship and getting in there early. So by the time that the big boys uh, got in there in the spring, you know, we had already – uh, either A, got the kids committed, or B, had that strong enough relationship and trust where they wanted to, to come with us over some of these other guys, maybe out in Kansas or Florida or Texas. So that was kind of kind of how we did it was really the relationship process, you know, in, in, in the recruiting process. Um, but then, obviously, you know, we were fortunate to have some very, very talented players that all went on to play, you know, Division One basketball at Memphis and St. John's where all these guys are going and, um, it's a credit to those guys, man. Those guys came in, and uh, we didn't have some of the things to offer that, that other schools did, but but we had that relationship and that love and the trust, and um, and they stuck with us, man, and they grinded it out. And, uh, you know, I'll say there's, there's no such thing as a good coach without good players. Those are the guys that made it happen. You know, what was the process like for you when you first heard about the, the dodge the opening to the time that you would offer the job? Kind of walk us through uh, that whole process. Yeah, so I'd actually uh, been contacted by by a friend in the business that that told me, um, you know, that they may have some interest and you know, I need to put my name in the hat. And obviously, I, I, I knew that I wanted to pursue. I knew I was going to have some Division One assistant opportunities, but I really wanted to find an opportunity at a junior college that, that had you know scholarships and facilities and resources, and I wanted to crack at it, you know. And, in a better and higher level league, and and so that was really my goal. And when I heard about our city, um, you know, I I instantly applied and put my name in the hat, and um, 
and I actually happened to hear from them. It was it was a Wednesday um, after we had won the region championship. We were preparing for Hutch, you know, before it was even postponed. And you know, they asked me to do a Skype interview. So we did the Skype interview, and I think we conducted the Skype interview on Wednesday, and then they said, you know, we'll be in contact by the end of the week. We're going to select, you know, two to three people, you know, to bring on campus for on-campus interviews. And, um, you know, Thursday was, the I think it was, I forget what day it was. It was Thursday was when they postponed uh, the national tournament. And then obviously everything was kind of scrambling around, um, figuring out what we're doing. So I didn't hear from them on Thursday or Friday, and, the weekend kind of passed, and I was like, you know, maybe I didn't, you know, get called for an on-campus interview, you know. Um, it's unfortunate that it happened. So, you know, and then Monday they canceled the tournament. Um, and I'm not going to lie, that was that was gut-wrenching. Um, that was probably the most heartbroken experience I've ever had as a player or coach. Even though you go out on a win, I've, I've lost in championship games on a final possession, and, and it's not, it doesn't even come close to that kind of how – heartbreaking that was um you know when you work for it you know for three years and you finally get it done and those kids finally get it done and the opportunity they're gonna have it was it was a rough day i spent a lot of my uh monday that, that monday in um in tears um and then tuesday morning i get a phone call from dodge city um saying that you know that that through the process that that, that the committee um, had selected me unanimously, and they didn't really see a point in bringing multiple people on campus and wanted to go ahead and extend an offer to me. Um, and I'd already had a plan to go to my athletic director's house that day to, to kind of talk about, you know, the banners and the rings mm-hmm. and this, that, and the third of the ending of the season, academics and stuff. And so I went over there and, um, you know, let her know, and she was really happy for me an opportunity. And then I talked to my fiance after work and, called back Tuesday evening and, and, and told them I would, I, I would love to be the next head coach at Dodge City. Awesome. Uh, obviously, things are different right now in our nation with, with COVID-19 uh, impacting, you know, everything in our, in our day-to-day lives and it's affecting the way things are getting done right now in the tr- recruiting trail as well in, in all sports. And I was just talking about how challenging, challenging it is right now to, to, to get things done. I mean, what, what is it like right now in, in your day-to-day life uh, with obviously – uh, not being able to do too much. Well, you know, it's different now. A couple of things are different. So obviously, you know, I've spent a lot of my life and my entire life actually in, in the Southeast. And that's where my strongest recruiting ties are, you know, obviously. And, uh, and my recruiting pitch has always been, you know, at the junior college level to, to keep guys over here and not go out to Kansas or <laughs> Texas or, or Wyoming or Idaho and Iowa and, now it's changed. Now I'm trying to convince all these guys, come out to Kansas, man. Let's, uh, let's click our Red Hills together. Um, <laughs> so my, my recruiting pitch has totally changed. Um, but what has also changed is, is you know, before at USC Salkahatchee, it was recruiting was based on straight relationships. There was no pictures to send to kids or videos to send to kids of these beautiful facilities and the housing and all this stuff. So, so that's changed where now, you know, I'm having to do a lot of stuff uh, with pitchers of the facilities. And, and, and then, you know, um, Coach Zach, the women's basketball coach, was, was very nice. And he, he went across campus and, and conducted a lot of videos where he was talking about, you know, the different buildings on campus and the library and the academic stuff and the facilities. So he shared that with me, and I was able to send that to a lot of kids and a lot of parents, and they're loving it. That's kind of really helped out. I've had great feedback from it. But uh, it's different, man. It's all over the phone. I do a lot of FaceTiming because I'm a big person. I love in-house visits. I think that's how I've been able to land my best players is obviously the relationship. But I love going and sitting, you know, in a recruit's house with him and his parents and really sitting down and talking to them. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to do that, obviously, right now. Um, so... You know, it's really just nonstop on the phone and really building those relationships and FaceTiming. And it's funny, like, my assistant late at night is even, um, you know, playing video games online with some of these kids just to kind of, you know, build them up a little bit and right. build a little relationship with them. So it, it's interesting, man. It's totally different um, not being able to bring kids on business make it challenging. So I, I think recruiting right now more than ever it is really coming down to the relationships so that we're working every single day to continue to build and nurture relationships. 
Right. Speaking of recruiting, when you're trying to get guys, uh, like you said, to come to Kansas and Dodge City of all places, uh, especially after the concert had a, a rough last couple of three years or so, uh, what is what is your selling point to, to get some of those guys uh, from the southeast or from wherever you want to recruit from to come to Dodge City and be a part of your program? Right. So we're, we're, we're really kind of selling them on. I mean, I always tell guys, you know, because that, that's why I told guys when I was at USC Salkahashie, a lot of people can't even pronounce the name. And I, I told them, I said, look, man, junior college isn't about the name across your chest, about what school. Junior college is about the coach you're playing for. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's this network like with guys at the next level to help you get there? Does he have a track record of, of, of developing his players and, and, and coaching at a high level and winning at a high level and, and moving his guys on? That's what this is about. These coaches move all the time within junior college ranks and this and that. Like, junior college isn't about, you know, the name across your chest. It's about the, the coach you're with. So, you know, these guys in the Southeast, obviously, um, are aware of kind of the success that I've been around at Middle Tennessee and NC Central and Northwest Florida and then even as a head coach at USC Fox. So it's really just kind of selling them on the fact of, you know, kind of, you know, be with me, but then obviously everything that Dodge City has to offer. You know, talked about, you know, um, Mr. Ripple being the, the athletic director of the year. He's selling that to the kids and parents, talking about what great leadership we have and, and, and how, you know, he, he makes sure that, that the student athletes have, have, have the best experience they can have. And I talk about our academic support. There's great academic support. Um, talk about, now, obviously, the facilities and resources it has, and you know, it's a, you know, Dodge City is a sleeping giant. It's just ready to get woken up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then talk about the Jayhawk. I think the Jayhawk. You know, I've spent time in Florida, junior college and stuff, and I think top to bottom, you know, the Jayhawk is elite, man. I think it's one of the deepest, most competitive leagues in all junior college, if not the deepest and most competitive league. So just selling kids on on coming and playing in the best league in junior college basketball and and, and starting something special year one. Yeah, you know, you're from Tennessee, and your previous times have all been on the east side of the country, like you mentioned, in the southeast. And uh, so I imagine it's going to be challenging for you going from from South Carolina up to southwest Kansas. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, my, my fiancé is from, from a very, very small town in Indiana, and I'm from a very, very small town in Tennessee, and... Uh, believe it or not, Dodge City is huge compared to where she and I are from. Um, so, and, and actually, you know, the town of Walkerville we're living in, I think the census is like 7,000. Um, so, I mean, it, it's tiny too. Um, so, really, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, it may not be death in Florida necessarily um, or Murfreesboro, Tennessee, but it, it's a lot bigger than um, where my fiance and I are from, and then you go to Walkerville, South Carolina. So, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot more things for us to do in Dodge City. <laughs> <laughs> you also spoke about uh, getting out in the community and really being involved with uh, with the local aspect. So how important is, is getting in there and creating that culture early on so that fans will, will want to back your program? Yeah, I, I think that's extremely important. And we were able to do that here. The, 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 the fans, the community were really behind the program here. And um, it's just so important. It's just a huge part of the job. Obviously, you know, as, as, as a coaching staff and as student athletes you're you're extremely you know busy with with your day-to-day process of school and practice and wait you know that that whole deal but it's very important that that we're out and active in the community and we're, we're supporting any way we can and going to schools and being at events and you know me myself maybe getting out to the country club and getting out mm-hmm. to other places and then one thing we like to do here me and my fiance um you know really like to kind of hang out we we had a big group of of fans that actually these fans didn't even donate to the program, but they were just very, very loyal fans. They traveled to all the road games, traveled to our tournament. So we made sure that, that we hung out with them at least once a week, you know, going out for dinner and stuff and just, you know, having that relationship and just getting excitement. And, and, and then obviously, you know, we want to come and win. I, I, I think winning brings excitement too. So if we can find a way to, you know, really get out and be involved and show our face and be active in the community and then win, I think that can captivate and bring a lot of excitement. And then obviously, you know, being very active on campus and getting the student involvement, you know, to increase. And you know, we're going to do our part to make sure we support all of the other sports on campus. That way, you know, they want to support us as well. Mm-hmm. You've been around a lot of great players and coaches uh, in your career this far. 
Who do you think has had the biggest impact on your coaching career to this point? Oh, that is a great <laughs> question. That's hard to limit. Uh, to, to, you know, it, I, I'm such a players coach, so I really, I'm, I'm just, I'm all about the players. So these guys, and I, I told our guys when, when, when I accepted the job here, when I told our team, and I, I called all of them individually, but obviously I, had, I, I wanted to let the group know in our group chat. And I told them from the beginning, I said, you know, this was you guys, and I, you know, you guys and the former players. I owe you guys everything. Without you guys, you know, I never scored a point. I never rebounded a basketball. I was like, you know, without you guys, you know, I wouldn't be getting this phenomenal opportunity. You know, I want to thank you guys before I thank anyone. Um, but you know, Kermit Davis, you know, gave him the first mm-hmm. opportunity. Um, so I mean, without that, um, I, I, I wouldn't be in this position I am. I was. You know, um, a typical college kid and wanted to party and do this, that, and third. And, you know, I decided, you know, I really want to not just pursue maybe coaching high school. I want to pursue coaching at the college level. And, um, you know, Kermit Davis gave me my first chance and he's been tremendous help. He got me on my feet at Middle Tennessee. He, he elevated me when, you know, I did a good job. He, he got me an opportunity with Lavelle Moten at NC Central, who, you know, is a phenomenal coach and, and then I went down to uh, Northwest Florida with Steve DeMayo. And Steve DeMayo was probably probably my biggest help on the junior college level. When I got there, I was a young guy that had been a video guy and an ops guy. And at the Division One level, I didn't really know the JUCO landscape. And um, Steve DeMayo really helped develop and mold me and, and, and mentor and teach me um, how to be successful. So I think especially at the junior college level, um, Steve, Steve has helped me a ton. Um, he has helped me a lot. What can fans expect to, to see from your team on the court and in the classroom uh, starting in the fall? What, what do you look for in your in your student athletes that you want on campus? Yes, yeah, so we want to be successful on and off the floor, obviously. Um, you know, I think in order to be successful on the floor, you got to be successful in the, in, in, in the classroom. And, you know, we, we check every single class. We do study all every day. We, we monitor our guys academically um, very closely have a system in place that, that, that has really worked well for us. Um, you know, and then on the court, you know, we're going to be long, we're going to be athletic, we're going to be versatile, um, we're going to get after it defensively. We like to switch up defenses to keep teams off balance. We really excel in transition. Uh, this year we ranked seventh in transition points for Kondesman and, and efficiency at USC Sakahashi. And then, um, you know, Obviously, in the half court, we're very ball screen predicated. Um, we like to have a lot of guys uh, on the court that can dribble, pass, and shoot. Uh, skilled players that can that can all create for themselves and create for others. And um, but the biggest thing is being long and athletic and versatile, and having guys who can play multiple positions and guys that can really get out and play fast. All right, now let's shift away uh, from basketball with, with the next couple questions. Uh, I saw you, if you weren't a basketball coach, you'd want to be a, a sports talk show host on the radio. Kind of talk about. Uh, why that would be your your second duty if, if you could do so? You know, it's interesting. It's, uh, I'm actually watching right now um, as we're on the phone um, some sports talk stuff. I got it on on the ESPN. It's just something I've always I, I love debating and talking mm-hmm. and playing with. I, I love talking sports. I could talk sports and the NBA and all this stuff all day. I just think it's such a neat neat career. And you know, I, I don't know where where my life is going to take me. But if I'm ever fortunate enough to coach at a high level and, uh, um, and then, you know, I end up retiring, I would, I would love to get the opportunity to, uh, to be on TV talking sports. And obviously if that don't happen, then what I would do is end up trying to have like a radio show or a mm-hmm. podcast, but I just love talking sports and I can talk sports all day, debate sports, argue all that good stuff. It, 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 it's fun. Love it. All right. Uh, what's your, what's your favorite movie? You know, I wrote down Step Brothers when I did the uh, the uh, the questionnaire. I kind of hope that'll make me sound immature, but it's just it's just such a funny movie to me. I couldn't the first time I watched it, I could not stop laughing. I think those two guys, Will Ferrell and that other, they're just any movie they're they're in there together. They're just they're lights out. And then mm-hmm. the other one is actually Wedding Crashers, and. Uh, okay. Those two guys together, any movie there, and they knocked it out of the park, too. I, I love comedy. Um, and almost like immature comedy, too. It's just, it's too funny. 
Um, I like to laugh. Uh, I'm not a big scary movie guy, so I definitely like to laugh when I watch movies. Uh, what are what are some of your hobbies when you're when you're not coaching basketball? Oh, you know, I, I, I need more. Um, honestly, I'm just such a so you know as a young guy trying to move up in this, you get so sucked in. Um, mm-hmm. I actually probably need more hobbies. Uh, my assistant actually had me pick up golf. I uh, not much of a golfer, but I got bad, bad knees. I can't play basketball. Um, can't really do, you know, I, I love to work out and exercise. Um, but then, you know, I would say golf would be like my greatest hobby. Gotcha. All right. Uh, tell us about your fiance. I know you talked a little bit about her earlier, but, uh, you know, they're the ones that who usually don't get a lot of credit for, for sacrificing their time. And they're always there at the gym watching you, watching you coach and, and whatnot. So kind of just talk about her and, and what she's meant to you and, um, and, uh, what she is. She excited to come to Dodge City? Oh, she's thrilled. She's thrilled. She, she knows how much work goes into it. She's, she's home with me every night and, 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 and tries to always get me to calm down and, 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 and stop thinking about basketball and stop thinking about recruiting and just kind of enjoy the little things in life. So she's, she, she, she's the one person that can kind of get me back to, you know, reality and keep me grounded and, and remind me about, you know, the important things in life and, and not just basketball. But uh, she does a good job because she played college basketball at Manchester and in, in, in Indiana and um, was a really good player. And um, she, she gives me great feedback, and, and she's honest, and she's not going to hold back. Um, she tells me when I'm wrong. Um, she... Uh, she gives great advice, and uh, she'll let me know when she's not very happy. And uh, she'll definitely let me know when our transition defense um, isn't very good. She does not hold back. I, I get I get defensive sometimes, like, dang, you must think I'm a bad coach. Because, like, I know our transition defense has got to get better. I think every coach in the country is bad on that right now. She, she's not going to hold back. She lets me know. Um, but she's so supportive and and. She's moved from Indiana to, to, to Florida, to Florida, to South Carolina, and now South Carolina to Kansas, and um, just just very thankful to to have her in my life and, and, and have her and all of her love and support. Awesome, Coach. I appreciate your time. It was great to hear from you, and can't wait to, to watch your team get ready for the 2020-2021 season, and uh, stay safe down there in South Carolina. Have a safe trip up to, to Kansas, and look forward to having you here in Dodge City. Absolutely. Can't wait to get there. Thank you so much.